All right. Now things are starting to get interesting. You remember me discussing this at great length. Disney. It's not just Disney. But if we keep it unique to Disney, they have been bleeding money. They have been having back to back losses on things that they've spent a lot of money. You, we know what's going on with the Hollywood budgets. They're completely out of control. And uh, when you lose millions upon millions of dollars, that stuff starts to hurt, especially when it's on back to back projects. We understand that with their streaming services, they've lost not millions, billions every single quarter. They've lost a lot of money and they're projected to lose several hundred millions uh, going into this next one. So with that being said, you combine all of that. Remember me, I, I, I've, I've asked some of the guests that I've had on, I'm like, hey, at what point or how bad does it have to get before Disney starts selling off assets? Because that's when it's really going to start getting interesting, right? And here we have right here, as it reads, this came from Bloomberg the other day. Bob Iger shifts from building an empire to a Disney yard sale. Bob Iger built Disney into the world's most powerful entertainment company, by acquiring Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilm, now he's looking to downsize. Iger put roughly a third of the company up for sale this week, declaring Disney's linear TV assets non-core. That includes TV networks, ABC, FX, and Freeform. He also said Disney is looking for a strategic partner for ESPN, though he's not willing to sell that quite yet. And the company is already looking to sell or restructure its TV and streaming business in India. It's a stunning, but if uh, stunning, if inevitable turn of events for an executive who spent so much of his career working on TV for a company that relied on cable networks for the majority of its profit before the pandemic. Disney's media networks generated 35 percent of 24.8 billion of the company revenue and more than 50% or $7.5 billion of its operating income. The one thing that I forgot to mention also was the parks. I think that's probably the biggest one. That was something that was very reliable, that was dependable for them, and those have been rather stagnant. You have uh, ticket sales or prices are as low as they've been in a very long time. Wait times are as low as they've been, which, are, which really indicate that there's not as much foot traffic as there has been uh, historically. So you combine all that. It's not one thing. You combine all that. They simply aren't doing as well as they once were before, and you can't keep spending or operating your business for the long term uh, as if it's still that robust and you just can't miss and you can crap billion dollar films and your packs, your, excuse me, your, your parks are packed. Says accelerating the decline of cable TV has limited Iger's options. He thought he'd solve this problem with Disney Plus and Hulu, his mass market streaming services, but his streaming business is expected to register a loss of 800 million and the company's just ended third quarter. This was never sustainable and it's not sustainable. And there's going to be a big reality check that's going to be hitting a lot of these guys. Now, look, if you do work with any of these companies or you work with a company that's within the company that's within the company, which is really what Disney has become. But IP form, I would be very nervous. Uh, reason being is because, well, you know that there's going to be a shift in change. And sometimes the shift doesn't you're not included in it. Right. Uh I, I look at the comics, for example, with with Marvel. This is what we're what we be talking about. Will Marvel just stop selling comics? Highly doubt. Uh, I doubt that. However, when you start going to individual line items, maybe it is something that they look at with the publication stuff and they say, well, we're not getting a return on this pretty much at all. Now, is it one of those where it's not putting a dent in the debt it is that maybe they pile up? Or is it one of those that they are like, look, we got to cut bait wherever we can. Maybe this stuff starts to get licensed off. Either way, it looks different. So I would be nervous if I worry you, not saying that your job is going to completely go away, but they're downsizing. They're, they're changing course from what it was that they did before. And here's the thing that I think a lot of people don't consider. It is easy to take L's or you can afford to take L's in a short period of time. And in fact, this is why you have all the striking nonsense going on. Go watch my previous video on that. Uh, and, you know, studios, pieces of crap. 
actors in their unions, pieces of crap are sitting over arguing with each other. And the status quo at the end of the day is still being protected. It's not like these guys with all the money, especially those top actors, are really talking about building their own completely independent studios and uh, doing their own thing. That's not what it is they're coming. That's not the pr perspective that they're coming from. Instead, it's you need to foot the bill as the mega corporation. And that status quo is something that is attractive to people because it's less risk that's involved. However, on the other side of that, what you have to consider is that if you continue to lose money, well, they're going to start downsizing and you don't have as much of a bargaining chip or a, 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 a negotiating power that you once had. And that's what has to be considered with this. It's that it's that they they don't that money isn't flowing like it once was before. So you might not be included and the affairs might start to change. The assets might start to change. Just how we look at entertainment in general is starting to fundamentally change. And really, a lot of the mega corpos are late to the party. They're late to the party, but they're going to fight like hell. All of them, they'll try to get a deal done. Or of course, both sides, because they need each other, because in the event that it looks like something else completely different. People still want to be entertained. The demand will always be there. But if it does look different, a lot of these guys might not be included or they might not have a spot, let's say, in the new uh, newly forming, let's say, entertainment industry. And uh, that's where things are starting to get interesting. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's keep an eye on this. What assets go and how Disney's plan starts to pivot with that being said. We'll see. If you like this video and want to get into a new comic book universe, visit Riververse.com. Our first campaign for I Sum 1 hit $3.7 million, and the pre-order campaign for I Sum 2 is currently live. So go check it out and watch the official launch trailer, which is the first animation of Riververse Studios.